in this video guys I'm going to be showing you exactly how I've just made over £2,500 simply by using 50 Dubia roaches. That's all I started with and I'm going to run you through the process of absolutely everything. Here we go. So if you guys are new around here, let me introduce myself. My name is Richard. This channel is called Northern Exotics. We deal with absolutely everything to do with reptile education. So we talk through all the modern day lighting, any new information that comes out, breed your own live food, specific species care, absolutely everything to do with reptiles. If this is something you're interested in, I'd really appreciate it if you did subscribe. When you're down there, please hit that notification bell so that you get notified next time I do upload a video. Now in this video, we're talking all about the dubia roaches. If you wanna know more about dubia roaches or any of the live food breeding, just click on the card directly above now and that'll take you through to a playlist and show you absolutely everything. But let's get straight into this video. So it will come to no surprise that all I really did was breed the dubia roaches and sell off all the babies, but I grew the babies up a little bit and stuff like that. But the actual knowledge behind it is absolutely fascinating. But um, I've got two different dubia colonies. One is the one I show on my channel all the time about how to breed dubia roaches. The other one, I sort of keep secret a little bit, um, that deals with all of the actual dubia roach testing stuff that I'm doing. Because at the minute, I've been testing a UVB lighting and an over-the-head heat source to see if that pr makes any production a little bit better, if you get what I mean. So uh, I've been testing on that one. But that, that test has come to an end, so I was left with this big... Um, container full of dubia roaches. Now I need dubia roaches because I've got a lot of animals to feed. I've got the savannah monitor, the Hugo, I've got a bearded dragon, Diego, I've got leopard geckos, I've got a calyx versicolor, I've got tarantulas, uh, centipede, they all eat dubia roaches um, mainly. So that's why I breed them. So I saw this um, lad up at Don Doncaster Reptile Show. I've never seen him before but he was selling solely dubia roaches and that gave me an idea of God, he's selling dubia roaches and they're quite cheap but then my cog started twisting and thinking, hold on a second, so you don't really need that many adult dubia roaches to produce that many babies, and then you can turn those babies, grow them up a little bit, then sell them on. Now, the way I'd done it, I went really deep diving into this, and I started checking out all the uh, Wikipedia and everything like that to see how many babies they would actually produce. I mean, I've got the numbers produce production from my original dubia roach colony, and they were producing 30 babies, per female per litter on average anyway sometimes it'll be a bit smaller sometimes it'll be a bit more and so on and so on sometimes they'll be stillborns and whatever but on average they average about 32 babies per female per litter they lay nine litters every in their entire life the full female nine litters throughout their entire life and then you work the maths out so you've got nine litters at 32 babies now i've just made it a lot easier and gone down the line of 30 babies because th that just makes it a bit easier for the maths and it worked out at i think it was around about 270 babies and that blew my mind i was like god if i can keep alive 270 babies throughout up into adulthood or sub adulthood and then sell them off at the same prices that this man was selling them off at doncaster and then I started working out the maths. Hold on a second. So how many females would I need to produce a decent amount of colony? Turns out if I only have 40 females and 10 males, keep them all alive, nice and healthy, fed up really well. I've been through this loads of times before because a female dubia roach will make more production if she knows that there's enough food there for the babies. Makes common sense in the natural world. So you've got to keep them overfed, so to speak. Loads of moisture source there. But if they lay that many babies, 270 per female for their entire entirety of their life, then if I have 40 females, how many would I get then? Well, that blew my mind. 10,800 babies on average, because a female can lay between 20 and 40 babies. And I'm going straight down the middle at 30 babies on average. 10,800 babies throughout the entire life of 40 females. Now, if I sold them off at the exact same price that he was selling them off, he was selling them off at mid-size, sort of half an inch size, and he was selling them off at 25p each, 
or I think it was 10 for £2.50, which is 25p each. Imagine the sums with that one. £2,700. Right, I'm sorry. What? So, yeah. I've got this other Dubia colony. I picked up my Dubia roaches from a place online. It was a buzzard reptile. Pick, picked up 50, um, 50 females, because I, I expected some dead loss on the way sort of thing. But yeah, we picked up 50 um, females and then 10 my, males. Turns out we got 56, I think, 56 females come through the post. We obviously didn't count them. We just chucked a load in and pff, suited me. We ordered them at sub-adulthood, so they w we knew that they weren't going to have been bred before. Because if they're adults, you don't know how many times they've bred in the past. So you don't know how long, how many more litters that that female's going to have. So always go for the sort of sub-adult, a molt before maturity sort of size, and then um, go from there. That's definitely the best way to start. But 10,800 babies, 25p each. I was selling them at 10 for... Um, 10 dubia roaches for £2.50 because I wanted to undercut everybody. I sold some off to the shops. I gave some away to the reptile rescue and stuff like that. Um, I mean, I did undercut them. I mean, in the UK, you can buy 8 to 10 for around about £3.50 or so from the shops, obviously. Um, I mean, online you can get better deals than that. But in the shops, you can buy them for about £3.50 and I was selling them at £2.50. Everyone loves a bargain. I wanted to get rid of these babies and just see what happened it was a little experiment and it worked let's take a little run over to my dubia colony and i'll quickly run you through how to care from and stuff like that because it is so easy you have literally nothing to do with this um, colony you set it up you feed it you water it leave it that is it so this is basically 2500 pound for basically doing nothing there is little costs involved in starting it up and keeping it going but you can reduce those costs. Let's go over to the colony and I'll talk you through all of that. So right here, this is my Dubia Roach colony. Just the one I use to breed for all of my um, animals that eat Dubia Roaches. That's just an old piece of orange that needs to come out now. Um, so I've not cleaned it off or anything. This is just how it is all the time. We've got egg crates. Now, sometimes I stack these vertically. Sometimes I stack these horizontally. It doesn't really matter. The only purpose for these is as they're together, just like this, they can scurry through all the little gaps because they love it when it's dark. They get more comfortable when it's dark. So in between all the scurries, I mean, see, there's some there, a few more in there. If we move it right the way over to the bottom, I'll see if I can get you a better shot. You can see loads more kicking around in there. A few more there. There we go. You can see all the little babies down there as well. Another piece of orange that I've just this second put in. Loads of babies, they really do need a clean out, which is the joy with these, they only really need to be cleaned out once every sort of month or so. Not really that often, but I will be getting these cleaned out as soon as I finish recording this. So let me run you through everything you need to know. Like I've just said, you've got the egg crates, just somewhere for them to hide in. They love it just like that, it doesn't have to be pretty, just stack them in vertically or horizontally, whichever one you want. Preferably vertically because they thermoregulate from the heat at the bottom of the enclosure. The heat rises, comes up, so they can thermoregulate nicely. Over that corner there, you can see that one there, that's roach chow, which is basically just a bit of dry food for them. It keeps a bit longer. If you want to learn how to make roach chow nice and cheap, I'll stick a card just up here. Click on that, it'll take you through to an old video that I did make about how to make roach chow. Down that bottom corner there, it's another tub with orange in it. If you have a look at these tubs, I've cut a little hole in them, just like that. I get the orange, split it in half, and then I sit it like that, so they can attack it at both sides nice and easily. Sometimes I'll do it like that. Stick it down so they can get to it nice and easy. Make it nice and comfortable for them. Every sort of once a week or so, I'll get the spray bottle, and I'll just mist it down, because they're from the, they're a tropical roach, a dubia roach. Um, so they like it a bit warm and they like um, the extra humidity. It really does help them pro produce a lot nicer. It's a messy setup, but it really does work. As you can tell, I've got, you've just seen an absolute ton of babies in there. So that's inside the enclosure. Now these do need heat, like I've just this second said. They do need a bit of heat. For me, again, I like to save a bit of money. So it's on top of my bearded dragon's enclosure. Ah! Yeah, it's on top of my bearded dragon's enclosure. There you go. There he is, just sat there. And there's the heat bulb. Directly above it is the Dubia Roach colony. So yeah, that's how it heats up. The heat 
transfers through this piece of wood on the top of the enclosure into the bottom of the enclosure there and waste up it just uses kinetic heat so it's not waste anymore let's turn that up and that is basically how you care for your dubia roaches as you can tell as soon as you put an orange in bang they go straight for it you need some sort of fruit that is high in moisture but not wet you cannot use water because they'll drown you can use water crystals which is something that i do use sometimes you can use this stuff bug gel or actual water crystals you can use just dog biscuits over there that sometimes can be a bit high in protein so get a low protein sort of dog food for them but you can use that instead of roach shell and these now you can buy these dead they're dead expensive online a good top tip for you there's a roach a good top tip for you is to go to your local cafe because they just throw, throw these away all the time well if they throw these away you can just go in and say can I recycle these for you? And they normally go, yeah, come back at the end of the day, we'll save them for you. And then you get them for free, which is exactly what I do. And they last an awful long time. I mean, these are six months old. The ratio that you want, you can see this one here, or those ones with the long wings on them. That one there is a female. It's got tiny little stubby wings on the edge. And the one that's just gone in there is a male. because it's got wings spanning the entire length of its body. I know it's really bad footage and you can't really see very well. Let's try and get a better light for you. I'll turn that up for you. There you go. That one there is a male. You can see how the wings span the entire length of the body. And that one there is a female. See how shorter it is? It just looks totally different. It's got tiny little stubby wings you can see just there. That's how you tell whether they're male and female. And you need to have around about one male to five females that way you don't get any competition it doesn't overcrowd the females the females don't get over mated and die early the males don't start fighting for um, the females and it just works out that's the best ratio to have one male to five females and that's definitely the way to go if you, you want to do this but that means you can also do this on whatever scale you want to do it on whether it be one male and five females just so you get a few for one leopard gecko or you can do it on a scale this sort of size for animals like I've got. This was started off with 50 adults. Now that feeds quite happily my bearded dragon, my savannah monitor, my leopard geckos, my leopard gecko babies, tarantulas, and I still have loads and loads left over. And that's it. Loads more there. When it comes round to feed time and you want to start feeding a few off to your animals, it's always advisable to feed off the males because again, you don't want to overcrowd the females with the males. Now there are some things you don't want to do. There's rumors going around that if you feed your dubia roaches in a high calcium diet, then you don't need to cover them in calcium dust to give to your animals. That's incorrect. If you give your uh, dubia roaches too much calcium, then they can't molt out of their old skin and they can't grow and they end up dying in their old molt. So you don't want to give them a high calcium diet. Just stick to your calcium powders when you're feeding them off to your animals. You don't want to give them water as a moisture source because they can easily drown very very easily so you don't want to give them water you can give them water crystals you can give them fruit that's got high moisture content which is what i do you can give them loads of different things if you are giving them fruit like you've just seen me there i've gave them oranges orange and citrus can be poisonous to some reptiles so do your research and find out whether or not your animal can have citrus before using oranges me personally, I know that the bearded dragon can't have citrus, or it's advised that the bearded dragon can't have citrus. I've not found any scientific proof to back that up, but it's a big rumor that I've heard going around quite a lot, and um, so I don't want to risk anything. My bearded dragon doesn't get those dubia roaches simply because they are fed on oranges, but the rest of my animals are pretty good on it. I've shown you how you can make 2,700 pound quite easily off 50 dubia roaches. I never made 2,700 because I did give quite a chunk. I gave a couple of hundred pounds worth to the local reptile rescue. They had them as a gift sort of thing, a bit of a donation. But yeah, I made best part of, I can't, I wish I had the figures with me. I really do wish I had the figures, but I made around about 2,500, 2,300, that sort of range. And it only took me a month or so to sell them because in the UK, they are becoming quite hard to find. So it's definitely a little market worth looking into if you've, if you've got the time to do it. But like I say, they take no time at all. If you're worried about having them in your house, there's nothing to worry about. I've just shown you how to basically heat them for free, feed them for next to nothing, and 
that's it's, it doesn't take a lot of time so it's well worth looking into if you guys want to get into it that's enough um gibbering on for me today so thanks for tuning in guys if you want to see more live food videos click on that playlist up there if you want to see anything else i'll click something down here for you to have a look at and if you want to subscribe hit that button just there thanks for tuning in guys peace out